is a wonderful piece at Conservative Review. As you know, they're a sponsor. As you know, I am the executive editor there by Daniel Horowitz, one of the great writers at Conservative Review, and uh, seven shocking facts about Islamic immigration. Am I allowed to talk about this? I think I can. I mean, after all, it's not University of Missouri where there's free speech and academic freedom, or Yale, or Ithaca, or all the rest of them. He writes, has America already become like Europe with respect to homegrown terror and Islamic immigration? Either way, what can we do to delay the inevitable slide into cultural suicide and crossing that point of no return many European countries have already traversed? He says, these are the questions we never hear asked of the presidential candidates, even though they cut to the core of the most existential security threat to our generation and future generations. For all the talk of ISIS and Putin, nobody in the political class wants to discuss the 800-pound gorilla in the room the widespread threat of homegrown terror due to endless immigration from the Middle East. It's true. Here's some shocking facts that the presidential candidates would be wise to address, especially in light of what we're seeing in Europe. Seven facts to consider. Number one, numbers. We have admitted approximately 1.6 million immigrants from predominantly Muslim countries from 2001 to 2013, double the average rate prior to 9-11. Let me repeat, double the average rate prior to 9-11. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a serious vetting process in place for people coming from these countries in the Middle East. The FBI director says we have an investigation in all 50 states related to potential terrorism, Islamic terrorism. Number two, recent trend. Immigration from Muslim countries is the fastest growing segment of our annual admissions. The fastest growing segment. The countries with the highest percentage increase since 2010 have all been predominantly Muslim countries. Saudi Arabia, up 93%. Bangladesh, up 37%. Iraq, up 36%. Egypt, up 25%. Pakistan, India, Ethiopia, all up 24%, although I would argue India is not a predominantly Muslim country, but that's fine. Nigeria and Ghana, both up 21%. Number three. Trajectory. According to Pew Research, the Muslim population is expected to triple by 2050, from 2.77 million to 8.1 million. It is expected to double in just 15 years and surpass the U.S. Jewish population by 2040. And you can see how the Democrat Party is affected by that. How the Democrat Party has already thrown Israel over the cliff. Student visas. In 2014, the State Department granted roughly 54,000 student visas to Saudi nationals, the most of any country. The Saudi student visa program has grown tenfold since 9-11. Arabic is the fastest growing language on American campuses. Oh, maybe that's part of the issue. I don't know. Number five, Arabs dominate refugee programs. Arabic is the most common language spoken by refugees, and that has been the case for over 10 years. Since FY 2008, 98,370 refugees have been native Arabic speakers. 38,868 have been native Somali speakers. Among the refugees from the Middle East, 91.3% receive food stamps. 73.1% receive Medicaid. These are the facts. Don't attack me. Number six, U.S. hosts largest share of refugees from high-risk countries. America has admitted 135,545 refugees from Iraq alone since FY 2007. After admitting over 100,000 Somali refugees from 1993 to 2013, 100,000 in 10 years, make that 20 years, we are still bringing in up to 10,000 more every year. And of the 15,470 Somali refugees brought in since fiscal year 2014, 99.7% are Muslim. Obama plans to bring in 15,000 more refugees from East Africa, despite the security problems we've been having with a segment of the Somali refugee population. You can see the effects even in local communities. Where I live, you hear Maryland. There is, a, there is a fellow who's Muslim. He's a lawyer. He's going from county to county demanding that Muslim holidays be holidays in which everybody takes their days off, even though they're in a small minority in these communities. And, of course, 
in our country, under our system, this is really an easy attack, right? Well, you've got to treat everybody the same, and everybody's got to have holidays and something and so forth and so on. Now, the countries from which these folks come could give a damn. How many Jews are in Saudi Arabia? Zero. How many are left in Iraq? Probably zero. Syria, under attack. And I could go on and on and on. Number seven, sentiments of American Muslims. According to a poll commissioned by the Center for Security Policy, 51% of Muslims living in America believe Muslims in America should have the choice of being governed according to Sharia. 29% agree that violence against those who insult Muhammad is acceptable. 25% agree that violence against Americans can be justified as part of global jihad. Among males under the age of 45, that number rises to 36%. 29% of males under 45 believe violence against America is justified in order to make Sharia the law of the land. Did you hear that? So when we hear the vast majority are law-abiding, there's no question about that. The vast majority are law-abiding, wonderful human beings, no question about that. But 29% of the males under 45 believe that violence against America is justified in order to make Sharia the law of the land. Just 34% of males under 45 believe that if Sharia conflicts with the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, our founding document should be considered supreme. Horowitz goes on, as you read through these, ask yourself this question, whoever voted for this? The reason immigration from the Middle East presents such an existential threat is because Sharia law at its core is at odds with the safety and stability of America. Yet once people immigrate here, they are entitled to full due process under the law. Once they become citizens, they are entitled to all the benefits of citizens and cannot be stripped of that status unless they're found guilty of committing treason. The job of government is to protect the existing citizenry. This is a point I have made time and time and time again. It's up to the discretion of the existing citizenry whether to allow an immigrant, who to admit, and who to reject. Any other generation would have exhibited enough compassion for their people and desire to see their country survive and would have been more circumspect in admitting more Sharia-adherent immigrants. While other oceans can protect us from physical invasion taking place in Europe, writes Horowitz, they cannot protect us from the political correctness and failed leadership of the politicians who endanger our sovereignty, security, and society. What do you think of that? Is the fact that I read this a problem? Hey, what do you mean the First Amendment? Hey, what's wrong with you? I need my safe area. You need your safe area? I'll tell you, then go to hell. There's your safe area. That little puke. Remember her, Mr. Producer, the vice president of something or other? If the First Amendment, uh, it threatens me uh, and my safety and my safe area, uh, we shouldn't care about it. Right.